Hi everyone, uh, my name is Anna and I'm so glad you could find time to join me today on this uh, channel. If you're watching me for the very first time, uh, you're most welcome. Um, thank you. Uh, please remember to subscribe and um, click the notification uh, button so that you know when my new videos come on. If you have watched me before, uh, you're most welcome as well. Uh, sit back and uh, yeah, and let's just interact over uh, today's topic. So today's topic is quite um, one that's really, you know, um, dear to, to me and uh, mostly because it's a topic I face day to day and, and it's a topic that affects everybody, um, the high and the low socioeconomic status, everybody um, across all divides um, are affected uh, by mental health. So um, we, we, we've watched in recent times the young, the uh, affluent in society, those that we always seem to think are doing well. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a topic that doesn't discriminate. It's not a respecter of person and it cuts across even to those, um, yeah, that you wouldn't think will be going through, through mental health. And the reason why um, it's quite an important topic um, to me as well is because in my line of work, I meet patients and I'm like, um, and, and, and I get to experience, you know, um, how difficult mental health can be. And obviously, um, yeah, and, and, and how it can go quite unnoticed until it's quite too late. Many of us, when you wake up in the morning and you meet somebody and you say, hi, how are you? Everybody will tell you, I'm okay, you know, I'm fine. But how fine are we? And that's just, you know, adding on to the mental health um, conversations that we need to keep open. And that's why I've decided to pick this topic. So we talk about it today. So I've titled this topic like, it's okay not to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. But then, um, yeah, what do you do when you're not okay? And so um, someone may be wondering, you know, uh, how do I differentiate between, oh, I'm just unhappy, doc, or I'm just, you know, I feel a little bit depressed or I feel a little, little bit under pressure, I am stressed and all that. So I, I think the most important thing um, to put out there is um, there is a lot of help but then you may not be able to seek help unless you knew that you needed to seek help. And that's why I brought across this topic today. Okay. So basically I've just, we'll go through various, uh, you know, signs, like six signs or, you know, like things that you may experience or you may see somebody that you love going through that may be pointer towards that this person may need help. The first and um, um, easiest thing that I've found across because you know sometimes you meet people that will say oh I'm just unhappy but at what point does the unhappiness cross over into depression you know when 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 am I moving from being unhappy to now being depressed so the first sign that I want to talk about today is like you may find that you are frequently crying or you're having emotional outbursts okay so by emotional outbursts <coughs> sorry, <coughs> is you may have episodes of being angry, 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 and, you know, and then on the flip side, you are finding yourself, you're more cry than normal, you're crying quite lots, you're having outbursts there where you just feel like, oh, this, this is not my usual self. And, 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 and quite importantly, people that seem to think that they are the strongest may actually feel like um, suppressing this sign. But to be honest, it's just as simple as is. You know, you may find that you're alternating and most times you'll say, this is not me. This is not my usual self. You know, this is not me. Something is happening. Why am I just so teary? Why am I having all these emotions ranging off from, you know, from feeling a feeling of doom all the way to just feeling like, no, I can't take it anymore. OK, so if you're going through that or, you know, this may this may may just be a sign that you're not OK. The second sign that we commonly call anhedonia is basically a sign where you're not finding pleasure in things that you previously enjoyed. So for example, if your hobbies are, you know, like 
you're finding it like you're going for a run, you are meeting for a cuppa with your friends, or they're just things that you really find that you enjoy doing. So one of the earliest signs is you may actually find that you're lacking interest in those things. You're not, if you are somebody that would have a run in the morning at 5 a.m., you're finding that you're finding even harder to push yourself to get up. You're finding it harder to dress up on a Saturday to go meet up your friends. You're finding it harder to go out for, you know, your, your, your Sunday, you know, soccer game. And you're just finding like, oh, it's not worth it. I mean, um, I'm just, you know, I'd rather just stay in instead of going out. That's also another telltale sign that things may not be, may not be right. Okay. Um, the other quite um, common sign is you may feel, you know, a feeling of hopelessness or just generally feeling overwhelmed, you know, extremely tired, you know, you know, as a mom, I'll give you a very typical example. As a mom, you're faced with a lot of things, you know, like you have your work, your career, you have your kids, you have to make sure the home is running. And most times mothers are able to juggle that really well. The other sign may be a feeling of being overwhelmed with um, your day-to-day -day activities finding that things that you would normally, you know, do before or be able to handle the pressures that you would be able to handle before, finding that um, they are overwhelming you. Sometimes in the nature of the job, you know, um, you may be seeing, like in my own perspective, sometimes you see lots of patients and there are moments when you're struggling to cope in terms of, you know, you start feeling the pressures piling up and um, you start feeling, oh, I, I cannot take it anymore. This is another sign for you to sort of slow down and say, oh, I may actually not be okay. Okay. You may actually end up like finding that it takes you an extra effort, like you're tired to even do things that you would previously be able to easily just do. Um, fine. There, there, there are some, you know, Things that you find, you know, you like you gear up when you're going to work, you know, it's going to be a busy on tech shift and stuff like that. But then you are still able to do it. But then there are days that, um, you know, or when you find that you're struggling um, every day, like you're dreading, you know, doing that thing that you would normally be able to do each time. And, uh, you know, you're finding that it's just taking an extra effort this may be a sign that you're actually not well. The fourth point is just a feeling of being hopeless and just generally having a negative outlook towards life. And by being hopeless, I mean you're not looking forward to what tomorrow will bring. Like, for example, um, it's Friday and you're like, oh, my God, Monday is going to be here before you realize it. It's Monday and you're like, oh, when's Friday going to come? You know, like sometimes when you feel generally that life is not worth it um, and then you sort of start asking yourself what's when you start noticing that each time you're like, oh, what's the point in doing this anyway? It's all my fault anyway. Is it even worth it? You know, so just generally having a negative outlook towards life. You may find that you're more critical of other people. You know, you're not finding, you know, any good or seeing any good in other people. And woe unto you if you if you have a boss, you know, or you have somebody that's, you know, um, that you report to and, you know, you're finding that people are, you know, they're being more critical than their usual self. And this is sort of something that's piling up. A one day thing is probably, you know, you know, can be excusable. But then sometimes we ourselves don't know when things are starting to change in us. And that's the time for you to tell me or to tell your friend that oh you probably need to look into this a little bit okay the other sign that uh, uh, you may not be okay is anxiety feeling quite anxious uh, uh feeling you know tense nervous um you know restless you may actually feel like your heart is beating a bit faster than usual you're finding you know difficult um think clearly you know and just generally being anxious or that sensation of a feeling of doom you know that uh, this is probably not 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 okay and most times you know people that are going through this will actually stop and say oh that's probably not me okay the last sign is that things are not going okay is that seeing death as an option 
seeing the end of it as an option, you know. People will come and say, look, I don't think life is worth living. You know, when you start to think or have such thoughts or and basically to be preoccupied with such thoughts, then it's about time to seek help. Because like I did mention at the beginning, you know, mental health and, and, and you know, depression and all these things, they, they are so silently creeping in on you. And sometimes you may actually not realize you need the help. So, for example, when you start seeing death as an option or ending it all as an option, then that's a sign for you to sort of try and actively reach out, you know. And if you've, if you've listened keenly to people that have taken their own lives, you will notice either in the last few times that they've mentioned a thing or two that their friends had and they did not put much thought to it. Some may jokingly say and say, oh, it's okay to go off a cliff. Things would be okay if I was not here and stuff like that. And that's a really, really sign that, that, that you need to explore that further. You know, it may just be a red herring, but by all means, it may be something that's going to save a loved one's life, that's going to save your life if you reach out and seek help. So in summary, I, 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 what I'm just trying to put across, and this is really, you know, really, really important to me. What I'm trying to put across is mental health is amongst us, you know, and, and various ways or there may be some small telltale signs. You may be feeling it yourself as an individual. People around you may be noticing and, you know, and may not even know how to go about telling you. But I think it's quite important if, if, if any, of this, uh, any, this, any of these signs are you know, like, you know, ringing up in your mind or you, you are sort of know somebody that, 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 that you, you think are going through that. And to be honest, the first step you sort of need to take is realizing that you may need help. You know, you may just need to be able to speak to a professional and there is a lot of help available now. There are helplines that you can call to get help. You can walk yourself into a hospital and speak to to a mental health, you know, like clinician. And and at the moment, there's quite a lot of, you know, um, support going out there and a lot of people being encouraged to speak about this because, um, yeah, it may just be in these conversations that we may be able to save lives and people may be able to get their lives back. So if, if you are going through any of this, please reach out, okay? Reach out and try and get some help because um yeah it's mental health is treatable thank you so much for watching please share this content um, um if there's anything else that you would like me to share please comment as well and i will try my best to address things as they come through but wouldn't you go out there and um and reach out if you're not okay and remember it's okay not to be okay but seek help. Thank you.